Um, thank you for tuning in on this Saturday night. Uh, I'm Anchi Lee. I'm the curator and edu um, of education and public programs at Parasite. And today our virtual student visit is with artists and also arts educator Mo Kwak. Um, Mo, do you want to wave to everybody? Hello. Hello, friends. Ah! <laughs> oh my goodness. Hi. Hello from Boston and waking up at 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, Parasite Student Visit is a program we started in May this year, um, trying to help our Hong Kong local based um, artists to uh, have more online exposure. And we're also offering um, artist fees uh, during the program to support um, the artist community, which is suffering from a lot of difficulties um, this time. So. Um, well, um, today, in the next uh, following an hour, we're going to have the first 35, 40 minutes um, talking about Mo's work. Um, and then in the last 20 minutes or 25 minutes or so, we're going to have a Q&A session. And according to Mo, Mo really wants to get critical feedback from everybody. So maybe we can have this Q&A session to be more critic-like. So don't hesitate to ask questions, share your feedback um, at the end, but also throughout the whole conversation, feel free to leave your comments in the chat box. And if there's anything you really want to um, interact with Mo, uh, Mo, are you okay with people just unmute themselves and talk to you directly? Yeah, that'd be totally fine. Yeah. So yeah, um, it's, is did a visit, but also we want to make it casual and everybody can um, share thoughts and uh, engage with the artists. So, well, without further ado, Mo, would you like to introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. Uh, so my name is Mo, for those uh, who don't know me. Um, I am an artist and an educator. I uh, practice in a lot of mediums in film and in music in installations and in sculptures, but primarily in photography and painting. Um, and uh, I've I've started paint uh, making art since ever since I was a child, um, ever since I can remember. And perhaps because I'm not too good at school, it has always been my pride and joy. Um, and uh, yeah, for those who don't know me, I, I studied political science and visual arts at the University of Chicago. And then I got my master's in education from Harvard. And now um, I work and live in Hong Kong. And well, Mo, you told me today we have some of your uh, students right here joining us today. Yes. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, Mo asked me to introduce, well, to explain this idea of what is a student visit to your younger students. So maybe I can add a little bit on that before we start. Sure. Yeah, I was thinking of, mm, how should I introduce to our younger audience? So what is a student visit? I would say it's like to invite your friends to your home or like a space or anywhere you usually make your own work. It can be a painting, it can be, um, a photography project, it could be a, a sculpture, anything. It's by you or it's a, like a collaboration with our friends. And then during this student visit, it's really an important yeah. chance for you to share, to present your work um, to the people who's, in, uh, who's visiting, right? You can share feedback, comments, or even offer help if the artist is looking for anything. And it's also can be very interesting if you want to brainstorm new ideas together and maybe in the future, you can work on something um, towards the, the same goal or uh, even invite your parents, your family to see the work or put your work somewhere and uh, you know, let more people. <laughs> Oh, guys, don't forget to mute yourself when you come in. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's how I understand student visit uh, from my perspective. Well, of course, um, 
to, to explain to our younger artists. So Mo, are you happy with my explanation? No, I, it's perfect, it's perfect. <laughs> so Mo, Mo, I know you made several videos actually, like especially for today's student visits. Would you like to share um, with our audience so we can know more about your practice? Sure. Um, so I'm going to start off with the um, all the places I make work. Um, and this is sort of all the places I make work. <laughs> Um, so currently I work most in my bedroom. <laughs> I've had a studio and I also have an office. So those are the two sort of spaces that I make work. But I do sit on this pink exercise ball when I paint. I also see, um, oh, David's here. David! <laughs> Uh, yes. Well, um, yeah, I also see um, your workspace uh, in the video, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you want to talk a little bit more about your workspace and like, are you sharing the space with? Sure. Um, I can quickly show you. Actually, maybe I don't have a... Um, so here, I share a workspace with my students. So. Mm -hmm. Um, this is my old studio. Uh, I no longer use this space. Um, but so it's between painting in my room and this is the rooftop of the, of the office in which I teach my students. So here I make pottery. Um, I make sort of all sorts of messy things. And um, yeah, and sometimes I use the equipment that's in the office, including a 3D printer um, and whatever that I can get my hands on. So um, so I'm often inspired by my students when they're making things as well. Um, so besides this um, video about your workspace, do you want to share um, the video of your like general art practice? Sure. Okay. Have a look. Um, share screen. Got this. Oh, nope. <gasps> desktop where are you sorry about this um yep found it here we go
Well, I see there are a lot of different mediums in your practice, right? Yes, there are. People, uh, video as well. Yeah, painting, photography, sculptures, even digital art. Do you want to start with uh, one of the works? Sure. Um, so the work that I probably want to start off with is some of more my more recent works, um, which sort of starts here. Um, this is I call this period when I actually start adulting because I start I started working, um, and that sort of limits. Um, the amount of mediums that I can use, right? I can't go out to make neon lights or I can't make giant installations um, at, you know, 3 a.m. in the morning, but I can take, I can paint. Um, photography is also a little bit difficult. So in the most recent times I've made, um, these, are the, these are the different paintings that I've made. Um, I spoke to my best friend earlier this morning and she was like, wow, like your, your newer works really sort of don't have as strong of a social message and it's sort of more formal and quiet and, and, um, and I feel, I sort of feel that way. I just, I just kind of, at the end of the day, because I teach um, full day, uh, I pretty much work nine to five, nine to six. Uh, by the time I get home, I'm pretty tired, so I just sort of want to express myself. And you'll see a lot of swimming pools because I haven't swam in a year, <laughs> and um, and I just I like the I enjoy the idea of sort of um, you know living vicarious online. So I make this painting gif, and so a lot of my practice centers around the intersection between art and technology or at least that's where I kind of want to move towards. Um, and so those are um, some of the works and perhaps I can also share um, some photography. Before we do that, I want to yeah, ask you some questions about um, um, the, the swimming pool project. Mm -hmm. So, cause yeah, when I, um, when we had a, like earlier conversation, you told me this is not like a recent uh, interest. This has been um, something longer term, like you've been like thinking about and uh, um, no matter it's the painting or um, like the gifts you're making, you also have made something earlier, right? But also responding um, to the idea of swimming pool and the experience of swimming. Yeah, I mean, I think, Swimming pools are a very distinct human invention. Um, there's a couple aspects of it. I think as someone who's grown up chubby and still is, um, I, th I, find the, um, I find it embarrassing. Like I just find swimming pools embarrassing, but also at the same time, absolutely exhilarating, right? It's one of the few moments that you, you sort of submerge your body into this like extreme cold usually and and um and i i also just think swimming is sort of a contemplative um space for me because when i swim you can't be distracted right even if your phone rings even if your mom's calling you um it, it's sort of you're just in your head and in your thoughts and so that's actually something i really miss during covid because <laughs> nobody can swim I see. So, um, so did you also apply this experience or um, this, I don't know, like a desire um, to other uh, works you were making as well? Yeah, I mean, I think if we, if we have a look um, at the most recent ones, um, this I paint like four days ago, <laughs> right? I mean, I miss, I miss just like, seeing clouds like i'm not lying on a lawn watching clouds and because I'm, I'm not lying on a lawn because it's you know 35 degrees out with my with my mask and then people aren't allowed to gather and so sort of these little joys in life has sort of vanished right another one um this is meant i haven't finished it but it's meant to be you know canoeing in the lake in the midnight right that's that's not happening anytime soon <laughs> either and and so these are sort of just things that I, and then this is sort of more, you know, I, I feel like this, um, 
you know, every time I get home, I feel like I have so much energy from my students and it's like I'm youthful. And then like I get back to my house and I'm alone and I, I'm sort of creating work. And this work sort of speaks to the, the loneliness of creating work um, in isolation, because I think traditionally a lot of artists, either they live in artist colonies or they, you know, they have studios and they have friends who are artists and they hang out uh, more than perhaps I do because I teach in the mornings. <laughs> um, and so those are, um, I think a big part of art is creating something that you don't see. Like you imagine the world to be or imagine, or to create a world that you want to be in. And so that's sort of um, both my therapy and sort of, well, it's mostly art is mostly my therapy, I would say. So are you referring to any specific like locations or I don't know, like dreams or experience? Um, I think for me, the biggest inspirations um, is day to day life, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, aside from, from my students, uh, when I teach, you know, just even a simple story, like, let me check if Juju is around, hold on, perhaps not. Um, my student Juju, who's three years old. Uh, me, 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 me. Oh, oh, sorry, hello. Yes, um, right, my, my, my student Juju is three years old and, um, you know, the other day I was like, do you want this to be baby pink? And, <laughs> And she responded, she's like, no, I want grown up pink. <laughs> and I, and I, I just find sort of these little things really sort of um, exciting and, 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 you know, just the little joys in life. And so I think one of the, uh, one of the main inspiration does come from my job of teaching students. I think the other inspiration, um, I'm Christian. So I, you know, I think biblically, there's a lot of really interesting visual imagery um, that, you know, I always think about, um, and yeah, mostly, you know, life itself, I think is, is, is an inspiration, um, the muse, but also, of course, there's definitely artists that I would like to share, um, who inspire me and, um, perhaps I can share my screen and books, life, uh, friends, um, I don't know, can everyone see the slide? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And he, he's just like a handful of artists that I really like. The first one is Zhang Daitin, who is a, you know, he's, he's, he's a master calligrapher, um, painter who also, um, sort of blends the East and the West. Um, at the time he was a bit of a maverick, um, for those who don't know, um, because he used these like bright colors that supposedly came from the Western world. Um, local artists, we have Matthew um, and Firenze Lai. I think, you know, I think there's something very specific about Hong Kong. Uh, I know Matthew lives in Canada, but, um, you know, I think, um, you know, if you look at Peter Doig or Nicole Eisenman, I mean, the list goes on. Um, uh, George O'Keefe, um, Tai Uh I think in some ways, you, I've heard this a lot and artists sort of make art for other artists. And so um, there's definitely times that, you know, I'm just making art, just wanting to see how hard it is to reproduce somebody else's art. Um, and uh, last but not least, um, and also definitely my professors, um, and in the past, specifically um, when I was in Chicago, the Astor Gates was a big inspiration because he sort of, you know, um, He's sort of like not in the traditional mediums, right? He, this is the Stony Island Arts Bank for those who don't know. And I think he got the bank for like a dollar in the South side of Chicago and he refurbished it to this really beautiful space. There was a salon and people can just go in. And, and I remember this one thing that he said in class and he's, and it stuck with me over the years. And, and he said, um, you have to make the, instead of trying to make the, oh my gosh, I'm butchering it. I'm glad he's not here. Um, you have to make the margin the center. And I think that is something that I resonate with because most practicing artists who make it, you know, they either live in Berlin or London or New York. And so, um, and so this is also the Astor's work is also what keeps me sort of sane in this city. But that's, um, 
uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of artists that are in Hong Kong, but if you look in, you know, Hollywood Road or um, galleries in Hong Kong, mostly they're, they're representing sort of international uh, artists that, you know, are the big bucks. Um, so that is my inspiration. Nice. Yeah, because I remember we were talking about um, it's um, like, how, how do we really define contemporary art? Because I know you have a huge interest in um, different art mediums themselves, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like, what is a painting and what is a sculpture? But you also shared with me, like, your experience, like, working with him um, make you think like think bigger about what is conceptual art and how you can really bring those concepts in your work and also in your um, teaching um, career, right? With your students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. I think moving forward, I'm definitely, right. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this piece called United Nations Plaza. I think it was in Berlin um, back in the eighties or nineties or something like that. But basically it was like the installation was like free school and it was around the clock and people just like it was sort of set up as an ad hoc library and and um, there's sort of the idea of intersection between education and art has always been sort of really close to my heart. You think about Black Mountain College and sort of these experimentation that sort of bring about really interesting work. And so in some ways in my day job, I try to create the space where, you know, kids don't get, um, they don't just get baby pink, they also get grown up pink, right? I let them use jigsaws, I let them use um, 3D printers, I let them use, you know, uh, $20,000 cameras. And, you know, and I, and I think, um, I think that is also, um, if it was up to me um, that I don't have to run a business, I would just make a, a, a free school um, and, and just allow people to, really create and and I think that would be one of the more meaningful um, installations that can happen and in some ways it also reminds me of um, Rick Ritt who makes like pad thai for um, his friends and it's is his work and and so yeah I mean I think when you're in Hong Kong you, you it's hard for you to think about this as art because of course I mean my mother's in in, in the in the call as well but I can hardly imagine her thinking that that is that is art like um right art sometimes is just a realistic horse um uh, which is kind of unfortunate um but i would love to share a little bit more of the work that i've made perhaps yeah yeah let's do it um let me share the screen um and so this is a photography series that i've been working on um, and it's less didactic. I think I used to, when I was younger, I like to just tell people exactly what I, I'm thinking, but this is, this work has to do with um, looking, um, seeing the world differently. Um, and it's through the eyes of dragonflies and anthropods, uh, and it's called Compound Eyes.
Um, so yeah, that's, that's an ongoing series that I'm working on um, called Compound, Eye, Compound Eyes. And I, I really enjoy photography um, because, you know, you, and especially, I mean, nobody's allowed to travel now, but um, that's something I really miss. <laughs> but uh, I think, you know, when I sort of reverse all these images, um, it sort of allows you to see a new image. And I, I really enjoy also the other thing is colors. And so I think um, when, I, when I find an interesting angle, that's something that really excites me. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think, Few people go around thinking about what mosquitoes, um, you know, what they see. But I, I, that was just one of the days I just I'm like, oh, I wonder how the mosquito can find me. Um, and uh, and yeah, I just I I love I love sort of being able to capture something and be able to de defamiliarize if something's familiar. Yeah. So uh, I, I I think I. Um, see many different like places in the like all over the world in this video so I intentionally to capture those moments when you're traveling like um, like tagging everywhere on the globe or um, like so I mean I think in terms of yes I think traveling you have an impulse to sort of capture to remember especially in this digital age but I think in terms of um, whether it is right to, you know, to to the folks who are, you know, in Boston right now, like the Hong Kong pictures are the the, the ones that are foreign, whereas you know the folks that here it's it's local, and the folks who are in Israel right now, you know, but I think I think the point is less about um, conceptually, you know, traveling and taking uh, good pictures and having like, you know. A, a gorgeous Instagram, uh, but I think it's more about helping or at least attempting um, to help people to see things differently because I think um, I think this is something that I struggle a lot with. Um, if anything, if anybody knows about Joseph Albers mm -hmm. um, interaction of colors, um, you know, he has this really brilliant way of illustrating that, you know, a lot of things are optical illusion. And I think, um, you know, I think that there's been a lot of friction in the world. Um, we don't have to be reminded of that. And and I I, I want to be able to be em empathetic, right? Like just not being able to, to be able to see things as they are and to be, see, to be able to see things as they're not, right? And I think that is what prompted um, this series um, to just to see things differently, right? Because, okay. hmm? Yeah, is there like a specific angle or a storyline or like anything you want us to see um, in like your own narration? I mean, for this particular work, I think um, I think because you know it it is take there's a lot of different places, there's a lot of different colors. I think it's it's hard to um, see a storyline, but I think it's more about the process um, in terms of being able to sort of Photoshop an image into something that it wasn't, right? And I think that to me um, is more focused on the process rather than the product. Mm -hmm. Can I maybe throw a more challenging question as we want to do more of a critic? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, like how would you say that like this video or this work is different from like, say like tourism videos who also like presents a very uh, intimate and also like a moving moment of a place because um, it could be also offering a different angle as different photographer approaches the scene, right? Sure, yeah. No, I think that's a great question. I think you know, I think in terms of being able to convey, right? I mean, I, I think that the original intent is to to try to see the world as a mosquito or as, as dragonflies or anthropods, any, anything that has compound eyes. And I think um, the way, I think the, what I included in the beginning is sort of, absolutely, it's just iPhone footage of, um, iPhone footage of the places that I've traveled in. And 
I wanted to just give a little context of where those photos come from. Um, so perhaps, I don't know if it was, it would have been better if I didn't show the, um, the, what, the origins of it. But, um, but I think in terms of how is it different? I mean, I, you don't, you don't see, you know, two feet floating into <laughs> floating in a pool, right? You rarely see sort of, you know, the first image I can, maybe I, perhaps I can share screen and hold on. Uh, I can show you, um, Oh no. Yep. That's what I want to do. Um, so, all right. Uh, yeah, this is it. a, yeah, this is a, this is the Superman for those who, uh, have been to six flags in, um, Chicago. <laughs> um, and right. That's not, that's sort of, that's not the first thing that you think about. Um, and, and, uh, like how can a roller coaster be that beautiful? Like, um, it, it, the colors was just so striking. And, and I think you wouldn't be able to see this image. Um, and then this, of course, is, you know, a selfie in a pool, except with my feet. Um, and, and I think, you know, it allows us to sort of um, remove yourself, almost remove yourself from the place. It's not about promoting the place, right? I mean, for those who know this place, um, is, uh, it's, 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 the, uh, it's outside of the Cambridge Public Library. Um, and, and perhaps even those who see this, this image um, can't recognize it. This is the peak. Um, and then of course, this is the city and there's a lot of cities here. Um, this, is, this is the Hong Kong U Law School Library. I uh, know the cubby holes that you get your, um, get your papers back. Um, but that's all to say, answering your question, it's, it's almost the opposite of, um, of a tourist sort of like, video or, or, or those pictures, because those are the things that you wouldn't be able to recognize. Mm -hmm. I see. So do you want to share more of the photographer works with us? Um, yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Um, so if I go back to the ooh, share screen. Um, yes. My sharing screen. I have no idea. Um, let's see have a look. Yes. So earlier works. Um, this is a series that I'm doing with my mother. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I think I think just to show you for those who missed it. Uh, this is another piece. And um, this is of a, a friend Bray. Um, and all these are I, are printed uh, in. I see these. I see these prints every day, and and I think it comes from a sort of place in which I think, you know, frankly, having been to so many museums, I think the issue of representation um, bothers me deeply. Um, <laughs> when I'm using the Google arts and culture app and then, you know, you take a selfie and then they match you with the art, you know, almost every other Asian girl would have the same piece from that same collection. And I, I think, you know, just like, you know, Carrie James Marshall, Carrie Marshall, Carrie James Marshall. Yes. Um, <laughs> right. Or Kehinde Wiley, you know, not seeing black bodies in, in museums. I think similarly, I'm frustrated, but of course, like I understand that when I'm in, Europe or the US, um, um, it's difficult, but of course, even in the US, there are so many Asians um, in, in terms of contemporary art. Um, and in, in Hong Kong, similarly, in the galleries, you know, they're always selling Jeff Koons or, you know, the, the only Asian woman I think they sell is like Yayoi Kusama and I don't know, Yoko Ono or like, you know, a handful of other names. And so it frustrates me that I can't see people that look like me in this world. So I just, I just fill my walls um, with uh, this work. And, you know, this is literally in my dining table. This, this, <laughs> I can show everybody, <laughs> right? And, and, and I walk into the office, um, those are sort of all the pieces that I see. And, and it, you know, it, it serves a function for me personally, mm -hmm. uh, because I, precisely because I don't see as much of what I'd like to see in this world. Can I ask, so when you invite your mother as uh, your model, mm -hmm. uh, 
like in these two images, one is um, like um, it's like below her head, and the other one is like she's kind of hiding behind the tree. Mm -hmm. Is this like post suggested by you, or is there um, something else you want to capture from from the mom? I mean, these were taken in Boston, and she's wearing my clothes. Um, so this one is next to the Charles. Um, I've 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 been meaning to take more, but of course life happens. Um, and this one is just right out of my apartment. Again, she's wearing my clothes. Um, I think in terms of, you know, I think in terms of why I take pictures of my mother, um, this is just something I do a lot. Um, even if she's like drinking a cup of coffee, I'd be like, mom, the lighting is great and you look awesome. And then I just take a picture. But in terms of, um, sort of the history of photography. I forgot what the artist's name is, but I also want to, I'm interested in the idea of aging. I think, I think about sort of aging and perception and, and, you know, I would like to take a picture uh, of my mother every year um, as she grow, grows more beautiful and wiser. Um, and yeah, I just, I just think that, um, you know, I mean, I have, I mean, one of the fears is that, you know, all our parents, oh, this is so morbid, but all our parents are going to die one day. And, and, uh, and, you know, I think something that I, I would have relished is, um, is, you know, images, images of my mother, or it's also just the, the process of being able to make work with somebody you love deeply. And so, um, and, you know, photo shoots are always fun especially if that's her mom and so that is why I make this work. I know you have many other works um, you know involving your friends family as your models mm -hmm. except for your recent paintings right do you want to share with us? Sure uh, recent paintings let me find this recent paintings share 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 Hua. Hua. share screen okay let's have a look um okay uh recent paintings do, do, do. i swear it is oh it's here do. okay i got it it is here okay yes so this on the left is wizard um for those who know wizard uh wizard uh used to work at lifelong labs with me and she's gone to grad school but she's my colleague, my one and only colleague when I um, started teaching. And, um, and then on the right, it's Akshay. Akshay is a student of mine who's, who is in California right now. So it would be 5.30 in the morning. So he unfortunately cannot join us. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I started painting just like portraits um, because I wanted to I wanted, there's a couple of things. I think, you know, I think as a, as a, as a painter, unfortunately, I think, you know, being able to paint realistically is still within the repertoire, right? Before you can, you know, go crazy. Like one of the most known examples is Gerhard Richter, right? His, his, his photo realism, it, you know, knocks my socks off. And then he does these like crazy, <laughs> Uh, abstract paintings and I, I think this is sort of a rite of passage and and you know I'm not I'm not there yet I'm not not the not the next Chuck Close or anybody but I, I think I think I find the process of painting just like portraits very therapeutic I usually turn on you know my audiobook and I just paint and 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 to be able to match colors from a photograph is actually a much difficult -er art than it seems. So um, that is something, and I, I definitely want to do more work that involves um, my students and and um, as they continue to inspire. But I, I guess portraits are just you know most direct. Yeah. Well, I do see the um, I think I should call it like pureness from your paintings like uh, the pureness in uh, your uh, model's eyes. And also because uh, it's more like, um, like cut from above uh, the shoulders, like there's no other things, there's no like 
extra clothes. There's no extra any decoration stuff. So it's very pure to me. So I, I feel like, yeah, you're always trying to uh, present a very uh, organic and uh, the very original um, characteristics of the people around you, which is very beautiful to me. Um, yeah, and the same thing in terms of like, I just wanted to see, I mean, you don't really normally see Sri Lankan folks on the walls of, right? Uh, Akshay is uh, half Sri Lankan, half Indian, and you know, but born in Germany and American. And you sort of don't see folks, um, and Wizard is Asian American. And, and again, it's sort of the idea of representation and identity. And, you know, you have people who like to paint figures without the individuality which, you know, Francis Bacon or Marlene Dumas or, you know, Lou Twyman, all these people sort of distort the face. But I think for me, it's, it's all about the personality and the, and the, but shall we get to Q&A? Yes, um, we already have about like 45 minutes conversation. So um, anybody have any questions, thoughts you want to share with Mo? you're free to do so, you can just unmute yourself and talk directly. Or if you're shy, you can type. Mm -hmm. Hi, do you mind if I start off? No, not at all. Hi, David. How are you? Great to see you. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much to the both of you. Um, but more, I wanted to ask um, something you said really struck me, I think resonates with all of us. Um, well, most of us who uh, are working at home and many of us who even who work out, who still go outside to work, you know, we don't have the same kind of social interaction. And I think a lot of people imagine artists as the artist artistic work as being very solitary, but you mentioned this kind of lack of connection with other artists as uh, a kind of unfortunate consequence of the pandemic. And I wonder if you could say a little bit more about that and like, how do you find a connection with other artists in this moment? I mean, I think, you know, I think in general, I mean, art artists, I mean, I hate to say this, but artists are weird people. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I think it's already not, you know, um, you know, I read about all these like, you know, you know, during like Habermasian times or, you know, the, the, the three cats cafe in, in, in Barcelona or something where Dali and all these people gather. Um, I think in terms of COVID-19 in Hong Kong where, you know, people are scared of the pen you've touched, um, <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's difficult. And I think the way that I sort of seek connection is actually through, I listen to, I've just read the book by Questlove. I've read, reading books really helped me. I feel like I'm talking to people, um, uh, watching films um, and, and just researching other artists um, and writing fan mail sometimes help. Um, I don't always get it. I, I don't always get a response, but when I do, I get really excited. Um, so that sort of, the way in which um, I'm trying to navigate, but I think because I'm so used to making art in either like a school setting or a residency setting, or, you know, it's, it's hard after work, you know, all you want to do is vegetate. <laughs> but I have An Chi, um, and, and I think, you know, I, I talk to her about my work and I, I tell her, you know, my art struggles and, and she's like, Oh, we should do a studio visit. So I think having deadlines and having, you know, competitions, deadlines, showcases, um, it helps because I would never paint till 4 a.m. if I have to teach at nine in the morning, but I, but I have been doing that. Thank you, David, for this amazing question. Um, yeah, Mo and I definitely have talked about this, um, like struggles, uh, art world struggles for, for many times. And uh, yeah, I do think um, there are a group of so-called like contemporary artists and uh, Mo is probably not really in this group because you are also a full-time arts educator and uh, like different from other artists who are arts educators, they maybe teach in universities, but you actually teach younger kids, like very young kids. So it's very different. And uh, we, 
makes your job even more challenging because you're bringing ideas to the little ones who just started to understand what is art and what they want to make and what they want to tell through those words. Yeah, and, and because I also don't exclusively teach art, in fact, I actually don't really teach art at all. <laughs> Uh, but it's it's more sort of creative engineering, filming, you know, photography, you know, building websites, um, and so yeah, it's definitely not you know your your classic you know you have an MFA and then you teach at a university and and you know you still get the connections with other people. Um, yeah, it's, at times it feels like I'm just making stuff out of a vacuum. <laughs> but you're going to commit to, like making art, right? <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I will chase you. Do we have any other questions? From Emma to everyone, what's the... What? Oh, question. Okay, let me get Emma's. What's in the adventures, Mo? What will we expect to see? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so I've been starting this series. Uh, there's no photos, graphs yet, but um, three series I plan to start and you can keep me accountable. One is, um, I love Chinese soup for all the Chinese people out there. Uh, I just love Chinese soup. And I find the things that they put in Chinese soup very interesting. Um, and so, you know, you sort of see these classic, you know, Matisse paintings of fish and, and bread and Dali paints bread. And, and, and so I want to start a series on food, just like my grandma's soup recipes. So, you know, snow fungus and, um, I don't know what the English names for like half of these things are, uh, but, uh, but I want to do food paintings of soup ingredients. Um, the second thing is I want to do um, interactive playscapes. Now that I have been teaching a lot of engineering, um, I'm more sort of adept in circuits and all sorts of, you know, technologies that allow us to fabricate digitally. Um, and so I want to create installations that are interactive um and yeah I, I mean i'm not sure when i can put stuff out in the street but i think sort of i'm really interested in these ideas of like play and so um i really want to create installations where adults and kids alike can interact with um and play with and can touch um, because traditionally art cannot be touched um and then um finally are there any more hopes and dreams yes um i want to write a grant um to see if i can just i wanted to build a school called um ham yu ha hao which comes from this uh idea salty fish um which comes from this movie uh silam joko of uh stephen chow but the, the basic, the gist of it is one of the lines that really affect me in life is that if, you, if people without dreams are like salty fish. And, mm -hmm. and I think I do this with my business already, but I, I find that the clientele in which I serve um, is not very broad. And so I want to extend this experience uh, for free. And, and I, think, um, I think the best way, the most socially acceptable way is like art installation, uh, but a free school, um, kind of like the Astor Gates, Dorchester Project, or Stony Island Arts Bank. Larger scale, huh? Yeah, larger scale. Ooh, okay, Chinese soup, yes. Um, climate, uh, oh, hi, Christian. Um, that's my photography student. When searching for topics to do you go out and shoot or you shoot and come out with topic or you do both oh, can you a question because um later in the recording we won't see that oh, sure when searching for topics to take photos oh actually christian do you want to read it <laughs> you're in your teaching mode hi christian hi christian hi mo hi do you want to read your question i'm <laughs> um, sure yeah so when searching oh when surfing when searching for topics to take photos of, do you find a topic and then go out to shoot, or do you shoot and then come up with a topic, or do you do both? Um, thank you for the question. It's a marvelous question. Um, so generally, if it's if it's portrait, for example, of course I have to plan ahead. I'm going to find my models. I'm going to set up the lighting, um, and so that's a very sort of planned thing. But if I'm shooting for something like the Compound Eye series, 
you know, I just go out and, and get excited by anything that I see, just like when I take you out on field trips. Um, so it really depends on the, on the series, but I would say that's how I would approach, you know, either portraiture, which is like sort of what my mom does and, um, and then uh, the compound eyes. And then, um, let's see, question to you both with Parasite. Curious to, okay, Annie, question to both you and Parasite. Curious about the art climate in Hong Kong. What do you think about it? Does it favor any mediums or styles of art? Is it conducive to emerging artists succeeding? Anchi, do you want to take this one? I think this question is sent to you directly. I, I didn't see it in the chat box. Do you mind copy and paste and send to everyone? Sure, sure, sure. I got you. Everybody. Everyone. Everyone. Okay, there. Oh, well, I can maybe start answering because uh, I moved to Hong Kong from, from Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts a year ago. And uh, so I think I'm experiencing Hong Kong um, like f with a very fresh eye and very um, totally new experience for me. But I really love about Hong Kong's um, arts climate or the arts communities here is I think um, people like no matter it's artists or curators or everybody uh, taking different positions uh, in the art world, people are really working towards to bring artists uh, from Hong Kong like to like a bigger uh, platforms. So that's, that's something I really respect um, the arts communities in Hong Kong. Um, and uh, like, for example, like why I joined Parasite is I think Parasite is one of the few uh, institutions who really values uh, its DNA, which is to um, find and uh, to um, to like increase exposure um, of artists, no matter uh, from Hong Kong or from other parts of the world. And then one of the important things on your hi, <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I'll continue, um, and also to do like different programs. Um, if this person is not really an artist or there's other ways to um, bring out those conversations. And I do see many programs like this happening throughout Hong Kong. Even Hong Kong is actually a really, really small city. Sometimes people really don't really realize this, but um, yeah, it's a really small place, but, um, but everybody is, um, is working really hard. And what do you think, Mo? I mean, I think, uh, I mean, I think, yeah, there's definitely like a group of um, like big name local artists, you know, they get sent to the Venice Biennale and it's sort of the same names though. I think even as I, I've grown up to pay attention to, you know, I think the mobility perhaps is, I think the mobility, the upward mobility for art world is just generally pretty low. Right, I think I think a handful of artists get recognition. Um, you know, I mean, if you you could look at you know the art market reports, but I think in terms of um, I can only answer as an artist in Hong Kong. One of the favorite things that I love about Hong Kong is how easily you can get things fabricated. Like I put in an order to make a neon light, it gets done in like eight days and shipped to your studio. <laughs> right, you you put it you put together a an exhibit or you want your things to frame or you want, you know, your photos to be printed. I think in terms yeah. of production, it's, it's hundred percent like heaven, but in terms of, in terms of, I think opportunities, it's tough. Like it's I, small. everybody's looking for the same resources. Same yeah. resources. And then I don't think the government is particularly supportive of arts um, as relative to other, other cities. Right. Like I remember getting a grant for my exhibition, but they were like, well, you can get this grant, but you can't sell any of your work for money. And it's like, well, how am I supposed to live <laughs> if I'm getting this tiny subsidy from you? And I ended up returning the grant because I had to sell some of my work. And so, so I, don't, I wouldn't say it's you know, the, the easiest place um, to be an artist. Yeah. Well, 
and also like in terms of the numbers of institutions we have museums we have like independent art space like parasite um, but we have many more artists who need representation right so maybe it's also a good timing for me to like market a little bit about parasites uh, upcoming student visits because we think um, um, well like in the previous um, several months uh, our paid online student visits uh, really focus on young emerging artists who are like in their 20s 30s uh, even early 40s and do not really have a um, like a solid gallery representation and didn't have um, like a big solo show. Um, but in the coming months, uh, we are still committed to do more student visits, um, keep paying our artists for um, their efforts, um, offering our health insurance, but also at the same time, we're going to bring more um, younger arts graduates um, to the conversation because maybe they haven't really done any real life student visits with like curators and they might not have the resources to meet with people um, who might work with them in shows and other programs. So that's our effort and I'm sure other institutions in Hong Kong are also thinking about what is the best thing they can offer. Yeah, love Parasite. Um. <laughs> Um, so I'm aware of time. Do we have a limit or I can answer some questions? Have a question from Amanda. I think we can answer more. Okay. And just so for those who joined late, I'm just going to quickly type, um, this is where you can find all the videos. Um, in terms of the question, um, okay. Uh, let me see. It sounds like you're very aware about the ivory tower of the arts. Would you say your playful works are sort of tongue in cheek towards that, or would you want to create something else that has direct response to it? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think that's a fantastic question. Um, yes, I'm definitely aware of um, art. I mean, I, I was just saddened the other day. Uh, at the artist that I showed you earlier, Matthew Wong, um, he's, he's from Hong Kong, but he lives in Canada. And he actually recently committed suicide, I think at the age of 35. Um, and I think it was like a week after he died, you know, his works were sold for like hundreds of thousands by Christie's. And it, it, it's, you know, and then we had the, you know, I had my solo show in the Hong Kong Visual Arts Center like the year after he did. And I, and I think it's just so tragic that, you know, um, oftentimes you have work that is good, but, you know, people, the artists don't get, paid for it and it's the secondary market is so much larger i mean same with you know peter doig one of my favorite artists you know he sold you know one of his paintings for a thousand pounds and then you know in an interview he said hey like you know there's no such thing as contemporary masterpieces because it hasn't stood the test of time so it's just purely marketing and so i'm i'm very i'm acutely aware of like what sells what doesn't sell and it, it you know it's it's depressing but i think luckily because i have a day job um and and i don't i don't have sort of the peer pressure from other artists to show or to you know to get to land whatever gigs i i do have the freedom to create whatever i want which i don't i don't know if it's the best thing but but it it is um it is something that i'm aware of and to answer your question um you know, you are often, you're often sort of the very people you want to critique are the people usually who are supporting you. So <laughs> it's very difficult, I think. Um, but I think, you know, as an artist right now, I can, I can just make the best work in, in my own eyes and my own heart. And, and that's, that's all I can do. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe I can add a little bit because um, I think sometimes we're all more aware of the ivory tower, like the top of the ivory tower of the arts. And sometimes we may like even us could like overlook what is um, um, like near the bottom. So I really uh, want to suggest 
um, everybody here today, especially I know some of you are the parents of uh, most students who might pursue a arts career, career to pay more attention to um, say like younger artists and, and say people who are not like that successful yet because um, we are like in a very um, a struggling mode trying to um, to survive and trying to make our works seen and also make our voice heard um, uh, in many different ways. So should we wrap up? Yeah, Mo? Yes, hi. Um, I have two questions. Um, uh, I was wondering if one, you could talk about your frames um, and maybe talk about the relationship between some of your frames and the art pieces. And then I was also wondering um, if you could talk a little bit more about form. Uh, you mentioned earlier how like lately you feel like you've been focused more on form than like conceptual ideas. I wonder if you could just talk about what you see the relationship between form and concept it is or as. Sure. Even. Ah! Okay, I'm just gonna have one moment because I haven't seen this friend in way too long. Um, okay, I can talk about it now. <laughs> Hi Siri. Um, let me let me share my screen. Um, yes, thank you for noticing um, these frames. I make my own frames. Um, and they are sort of a recurring thing that I do. So this is another piece with the, the frames that are sort of a nostalgic TV kind of vibe. Um, I love, I sort of really enjoy, uh, here, let me bring it back. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'm there. Um, so I, I don't know how many, how many, I, how many of you know David Shrigley? I just really love him because <laughs> he's super funny. And, and, and I'm really sort of inspired by this idea of um, just not taking yourself so seriously. Because I think, you know, you have these like very polished um, frames, you know, museum grade acrylic is so expensive. And, and, uh, and I just wanted to make something funny and, and, uh, and, perhaps this is universal, but I, I find anything that is like chubby and sausagey and small is is generally very funny. Um, and yeah, just to, to not be, not lose sight of the inner child that we are. Um, there's a quote I really want to share with everybody that I just, I love. I love this quote. And maybe Iman, our spoken poet in-house, can read it for us. Yes. I will read the quote for you, Mo. Thank you. Uh, thank you for making it big. <laughs> let everything that's been planned come true. Let them believe and let them have a laugh at their passions. Because what they call passion actually is not some emotional energy, but just the friction between their souls and the outside world. And most important, let them believe in themselves. Let them be helpless like children because weakness is a great thing and strength is nothing. When a man is just born, he is weak and flexible. When he dies, he is hard and insensitive. When a tree is growing, it's tender and pliant, but when it's dry and hard, it dies. Hardness and strength are death's companions. Pliancy and weakness are expressions of the freshness of being. Because whatever, or because what has hardened will never win. Um, so this is a, this is a quote from, um, Andre Tarkovsky's movie, um, Stalker, and it's the end, uh, monologue, um, in Russian. Uh, but I've, I've always loved this, um, I've always loved this quote because it sort of reminds me that, you know, every man, every, you know, every person you see in a suit, everybody, every person that you think is this hardcore person is just comes from a baby, you know, I think, and I think this, um, this is a truth that, um, this is a truth that is not sort of that easy to remember and, and to not take life so seriously and to just, you know, um, to stay soft and, and it's okay to be weak. Um, 
and uh, and this freshness of being. So yeah, I think I think frames traditionally are really hard. So I just wanted to make something squishy and round. Um, and <laughs> as to your second question, um, in terms of lately, I've been focusing more in form rather than like something sort of super didactic, like, okay, this is made in response of the Syrian boy um, when, uh, when there was a Syrian crisis and somebody was washed off the, uh, or, or sort of the inequalities in Hong Kong. Um, but I think actually art is a place now, I think, I just don't want to be reminded. You can just turn on the news and be sad. I, I don't think we need additional avenues to be reminded of the, the state of the world. So why not paint a swimming pool or some clouds, you know, or, you know, a, a lake with a canoe in it or, um, or just like nice pink stripes. That makes me feel good. Um, so that's the, that's sort of the impetus uh, in terms of, uh, the heart is too heavy and life is already too hard um, to make work that sort of interrogates different, like difficult issues. Thank you, Mo. Do we have a last question before last question. we wrap up? Sure, do we? So um, Parasite is actually recording today's uh, studio visit and we're going to post um, the recording on our YouTube channel later. So if you wanna go back and check it out again, please feel free to do so. And we're also going to have more virtual studio visits coming up uh, next week, um, next Monday, um, 9 p.m. with uh, artist Ying Sui Fong and next Wednesday, 8 p.m. with artist Cassie Liu. And Mo, do you want to share your um, new website with everybody so people can oh, check your work? Yes. Yes. Instagram, anything we can know more, we can we can check check out your work. Yes, life happened, but um, this is where the some of the work is. Um, oh, hi, Charlotte. Um, some of the work is I haven't updated because I'm a terrible artist sometimes um, in updating things. And then I have made a new Instagram because Anshi said that I'll get more serendipity um, because I made an Instagram. Um, so that's a new Instagram. And um, yeah, and then the link I sent earlier is the videos from today. Um, but yeah, no, I just, I just want to thank you everybody who, who came out tonight especially those who woke up at 8.30. I'm not sure. Hi, Kristen. Um, I'm not sure if you're in Hawaii, but I bet Hawaii time is also not um, very conducive to this time. Um, so yeah, I mean, Anshi, is it okay if I just, if you leave the meeting open a little bit to say hi to friends? Yeah, I can um, stop recording earlier. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say some, yeah, I just wanted to say hi to some friends, but yeah, again, like, thank you so much, um, for supporting. And, and I do think that a big part of making art is making art for friends and family. And, and that's sort of, um, that's sort of why I make work. Um, because so much is lost in translation and sometimes, uh, Words just can't communicate. Um, so thank you for your support. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Mm. But yes, can I see the people? Now you can maybe you could stop recording and I can see all the people. <laughs>